Welcome to Dino Cell number one. I'm Gail Banks. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to explain why the boost gauge is dead to me. For about 100 years, guys have used boost numbers to compare performance. The problem is, this is flawed logic. The power potential of any engine is determined by three things. The absolute air pressure, the temperature, and the humidity of the air in the intake manifold. Temperature and humidity play huge roles in making horsepower. Boost alone only tells you the air pressure. As you know, hot air is less dense than cold air. So when you pressurize hot air, there's less of it in the same space than if it was cold air. Today, I'm going to show you that boost is a worthless number without temperature and humidity. How will I prove this? Well, we're going to run our 427 small block with and without intercooling. I'll keep everything the same, boost, timing, everything, except that I'll add an intercooler on the second run. If boost was the ultimate measuring stick, then horsepower should stay the same but you'll see that it won't be the same. In fact, we'll see a power gain when we intercool it. Why? Because the air is colder and denser, there will be more oxygen in the same amount of space. Boost pressure, air temperature, and humidity combine to give us manifold air density. How am I going to measure air density? The I-1.8 data monster. The I-dash is all the gauges you've ever owned and some you've never seen, all wrapped up in this 52 millimeter gauge. It displays all the parameters you'd expect, like boost pressures, temperatures, etc. It reads and clears codes, has customizable alerts, and the I-dash data monster delivers data logging on a par with devices 10 times the price. And what I'm most excited about is its ability to measure manifold air density. So now, let's jump into the control room with our engineer Jeff Lee and Diesel World's Adam Blattenberg. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're gonna make two dyno runs, both with 12 pounds of boost. The first with no intercooling and the second with intercooling. When we add intercooling, you'll see on the I-dash that the manifold air density will increase and so will the horsepower even though the boost in the intake manifold stayed the same. The intercooler is a power adder too. But how do you know how well it's working? You measure the increase in manifold air density. That's how. Starting the log. Okay, here comes the boost. We're going for 12. Push it, push it, push it, push it. Come on, 12, 12.2, right there. 154, okay. 545 horsepower, that's it. We got it. 12.2 and 152 mad and 545 horsepower. Let's go install some intercooling. Right, Jeff, we're, we're going to run the intercooler here. Uh, we're targeting 12 PSI again as far as boost. And let, let's see what the intercooling does for the manifold air density and the horsepower. So everything's exactly the same. Exactly the same, except intercooling. we've added the intercooling. Yeah. Cool. All right. So we've got two gauges on the right side here. We're reading boost and manifold air density. Then on the lower gauge, we're reading ambient air density, compressor inlet air density. So you see a little slight drop for the air filtration. Then we're reading intercooler uh, air density. That's the air density coming out of the turbocharger. It's slightly less. The turbo is being drug along 
rather than being a pusher right now. Then manifold air density, that's air density in the intake manifold itself. Very bottom, we have boost air density. That'll be the total that the system is adding once it's into boost. So what we've got here is a four gauge setup. One of them is a data logger, and that's the lower gauge on the right. You can just see the micro SD card punched into the face of the gauge. This thing will log up to a uh, hundred channels and up five, 10, or 20 samples a second. So, and it'll do it for days. For the guys that aren't racing, they could plug it into their OBD2, right? And it'll, it'll you can, monitor everything. You can get data off OBD. Okay. You can get data off of, if you don't have the sensors, uh, we have sen sensors that if it's not there on OBD, or if you've got an earlier truck, we have sensors you, you can put in. Or you can get data off of an aftermarket ECU. We're running this engine on a Holley ECU, and we're pulling a whole lot of this data off of its sensors, right, right out of its data output. So there's, a, there's basically no limit for... The iDash will read data from anything. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all the aftermarket ECUs that guys use for racing or what have you. Uh, the Bosch ECU that guys use for diesel a lot. Right. Uh, and all the late uh, OBD2. With the air mouse, we've got all, all the stuff, if you're a racer, that you would read at the races or get from the uh, uh, tower, say, to an NHRA meet. All the stuff like density altitude. This thing reads density altitude. It reads pressure altitude. It reads grains of water per pound of dry air, which a, a lot of guys prefer to relative humidity. So racers that have a weather station, I mean, they, they would this still- This is, this thing with an air mouse, which is our air sensor, uh, it becomes a, a, a complete weather station. Right. Yeah. yeah, they don't need to have their weather station on the top of the motorhome. They don't anymore. need to it's have still... anything. This thing's more yeah. accurate than that anyway. Yeah. This is an engineering level weather station. All right, this is test number two. We're going to run 12 pounds of boost again and 4,200 RPM, but we've added intercooling. So let's see what it does for the manifold air density and what it does for the horsepower and torque. Six hundred. I saw six oh one. Woo, baby. Twelve point three pounds of boost. One hundred eighty one point four mad. That's huge. Wow. Got it. Well, we know the little bank centerline turbo will do 600 horsepower at 12 pounds of boost. Hmm. Hmm. Kind of loving it. <laughs> that's a huge difference. I was not expecting that much. Yeah, I know. That's, I mean, I knew I it mean, would do something, whoa. but. Oh my God. Wow. I love it when a plan comes together. What we just saw was a huge horsepower increase and the boost gauge never moved. On the first run, we had 12 pounds of boost and 154% manifold air density. On the second run, we had an intercooling. We had 12 pounds of boost, but we had 181% manifold air density, and we gained 54 horsepower. Again, the boost never changed. Two wildly different horsepower numbers with the same boost. How did we gain horsepower with the same boost? Because the manifold air density increased by cooling the air, the turbo was able to shove more air into the manifold. The boost gauge only reports the pressure of the air, not how dense it is. This is why the boost gauge is dead to me. When you graduate to understanding manifold air density, know this, we have the gauge to read it. You know what, guys? This is really getting fun. If you want to see more, subscribe.